Today we're talking about he came to serve Jesus. He came to serve. What a beautiful thing. The God of all creation came to serve. Serve us. Can you imagine? The God of all things came and helped us. Came to do for us. He did that, obviously, as an example for us. To be that way as well. Amen? Amen. Some, sometimes people think, what can I get out of going to church? What can the church do to serve me? And that is not the mentality that we should have. We should have the mentality of what can I do to serve others? Amen? Amen. Now, it's okay to want to go to church to, get, to hear a good message. Amen? It's okay to feel that way, to want to receive something from God. But there has been far too many times that I've heard people say, Oh, I didn't get nothing out of the message. Well, what did you give when you were at church? Amen? Amen. Sometimes it's not always about you, right? It's not always about what you get out of it. It's about what you put into it. Amen? Maybe you're not here to get some good message this morning. Maybe you're here to give something back to somebody else. Amen? Because there may be times where we get we hear a message that we're not connecting with. And that may not always be the pastor's fault. That might be something on your end. All right? Because I do trust that God always gives me a pertinent message. But sometimes we may, okay, well, yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really connecting with that. Well, that's okay. There's other things that you can do while you're here. Amen? Amen. Maybe you're here to connect with somebody else that's here that they need something from you. Amen? I just want to give you another perspective about thinking about what it means to go to church. Because sometimes people think it's all about what I get out of it, what I get from it. But that's not the case. We're meant to be servants. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I want to read you all this quote. Real satisfaction is brought to the heart of God only when we are really, as people would think, wasting ourselves upon Him. It seems as though we are giving too much and getting nothing. And that is the secret of pleasing God. And this was from Watchman Nee, if anybody knows who that was. Nevertheless, when we are spending ourselves upon serving God, spending so much of ourselves that it appears to others that we're giving too much and we're not getting anything in return. But we know different, don't we? Amen. We know different. Because our rewards are not on this planet. Our rewards are held carefully and safely in His hands. Amen. That's where our rewards are stored. Anything that we do in service to Him, He sees. And anything that we do, He will reward. Amen? Now, I do believe He rewards us in this life as well. As we're living on this planet, He gives us rewards for our efforts in some way, shape, or form. But nevertheless, our true rewards are in heaven, and they await us when we get there. Nevertheless, let's look at some scripture about showing how Jesus was a servant. Amen? It was prophesied that He would come as a servant. Let's look at Isaiah 53, verse 11. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Amen? Amen. He was the righteous servant of God. So much so that he even died on the cross in service. Amen? Amen. Who did he come to save? Us. Us. He didn't need saving. He was perfect. But He died for us. Amen. Now that's the ultimate show of love. Amen? To die for somebody. That's right. And He died for us. He died so that He could take away our sin. So that He could justify us. So that He could give us His righteousness. Amen? Talk about service. Mark 10.45 For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, 
and give his life a ransom for many. Amen? Amen. He didn't come to be served. It could have been that way. He could have said, look, I'm God. Get down and bow before me. Serve me. Bring me the fruit of the land. Do all these things for me. Rub my feet. Rub Rub my back. Do all this stuff for me because I'm God and you are my servants. He didn't do that. He had all the power. He could have. He could have made us. But that was not Him. That was not His nature. His nature was, what can I do for you? Still is. His nature is He came to serve us. Now think about that. He came to serve an imperfect, impure, sinning people. That is our Master. How good is He? He's awesome. Amen? Amen. But we think about who can serve me. Who can serve us. Who can do for me. That is not our mentality, folks, as Christians. We look at Him as the ultimate example. Amen? He was a servant, so therefore we must become servants. Amen? Amen. We learn from our Master how to be a servant. Thank you, Lord. Luke 22, 24 through 27. Now there was also a dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. A couple of the, guy, a couple of the apostles. We've talked about that before on Wednesday. And he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors. But not so among you. On the contrary, who is greatest among you, let him be as the younger or the least. And he who governs as he who serves. And he who is greater is he who sits at the table or he who serves. It is not he who sits at the table, yet I am among you as the one who serves. Now let me break that down for you. He's saying that if you really want to be great, you be a servant. Amen? You be a server. You desire to be great, you need to desire to be a server instead. Amen? Amen. You will be esteemed least in the kingdom if you are wanting everybody to serve you. That's not the mentality. Amen? Amen. Instead of thinking, who can sit around and help me out and do for me? You sit around and think, wow, that needs to get done. I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to help somebody. I'm going to do for them. Amen? Amen. All right, Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. This was his mindset who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient even to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Amen? Talk about humbling yourself. He didn't come as the glorified God that He really is, is what it's trying to say. He didn't come in the power and in the might that He is. He could have. But He humbled Himself and made Himself of no reputation at all. Matter of fact, the son of a woodcarver, a woodworker, Joseph, he became as of just No value at all in human eyes. He came even so in his own appearance as just a normal man. Like he he could have made himself look ultra beautiful and everybody was like, man, you see that handsome guy walking through you? Did you see that? That's Jesus. He's handsome. He didn't even do that. He said, I just want to look normal and average. I want to be as average as I can. I want to be as humble as I can. Then we all can connect to that. Amen. Amen? We all can connect to Him. And we can all learn from His example and His mindset 
of being a bond servant or serving others. Amen? John 13, 1 through 17. Now this is his ultimate form of showing us service. Now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, basically he knew he was fixing to go to the cross, that he should depart from the world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. He said, I want to have a part with you. (laughs) Jesus said to him, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean. But not all of you, for he knew who would betray him. Therefore he said, You are not all clean. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is no greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Come on. Amen. Let me explain this for a second. So, washing somebody's feet, even in today's society, would be kind of a nasty thing. Right? Because some people's feet stink. Right? And if you're of that camp, you know what I'm talking about. My feet stink. Can you imagine having to wash everybody's feet in here? Some of them, some people's feet are kind of gnarly, and that's okay. You might got some ingrown toenails. You might got a little toe fungus. You might got some warts on there. You might got some calluses. You might just have some really bad, stinky feet. But to add on top of that, they walked around in sandals, folks. Everywhere they went, they walked. And the places that they walked normally had animals that walked in that area as well. Guess what animals do? They poo-poo as they walk. Have you ever seen a a circus or maybe a parade that had animals in it? As you're walking, you see them, they poop. Horses do it a lot. You'll see them poop. Well, as you're walking throughout the street, there's poop everywhere. You're going to get a little bit of that on you. Okay, it's just inevitable. Every so often you might say, oh man, I stepped in it. You know, that happens to me every now and then in my backyard. My dog poops and I step in it every now and then. Terrible thing. Nevertheless, so you add that on top of the other issue of people's feet. He's washing that off of people to make them clean. And he's showing us a perfect example of a servant. Getting your hands dirty. Amen? Getting your hands dirty in the service of others. And he's saying, if I'm doing that as your master, as your God, what should you do for others? Amen? Sometimes we don't want to have to worry about helping others or doing for others or attending to other things or getting our hands dirty. No, we need to as servants because we're servants to the master. 
And don't think of yourself as greater. Amen? Humble yourself if you have to. And say, I want to serve. I want to do this. Amen? And don't feel like you got to get something in return. Amen? You just want to be a servant. So if we've seen an example from God, as He said out of His own mouth, as you see I'm doing, you do. We need to serve God. Amen? Amen. And I was... Uh, <clears throat> I have this book. It's called uh, A Christian Samurai. How to Be a Christian Samurai. Something like that. And God kept putting that book on my heart. I was like, well, you know, I don't, I don't normally like giving a lot of quotes from books or from people and things like that. I may sprinkle in one or two here and there, but I really felt him pushing me to write some stuff from that book in here and to, to read a couple quotes. And uh, I understand why, and hopefully you will too, but I have a couple quotes from Samurai. All right? Now, Samurai is the equivalent of servant. That's what Samurai means, to serve, to be a servant. Now, this is coming from a samurai, all right? Hagakuri. And I have two quotes from him. And this is him trying to instruct other samurai on how to be as they are servants to their master. Okay? So y'all check out these quotes. A man is a good retainer or servant to the extent that he earnestly places importance in his master. This is the highest sort of retainer or servant. It is sufficient to lay down one's body and mind to earnestly esteem one's master. It is further good fortune if more than this, one has wisdom and talent and can use them appropriately. But even a person who is good for nothing and exceedingly clumsy will be a reliable retainer or servant if only he has the determination to think earnestly of his master. Having only wisdom and talent is the lowest tier of usefulness. Now let me read one more quote and then I'll explain. Being a retainer or servant is being nothing other than being a supporter of one's Lord entrusting matters of good and evil to him and renouncing self-interest. Renouncing self. Amen? Amen. Men of high position, low position, deep wisdom, and artfulness all feel that they are the ones who are working righteously. But when it comes to the point of throwing away one's life or will for his Lord, all get weak in the knees. This is rather disgraceful. The fact that a useless person often becomes a matchless warrior at such times is because he has already given up his life and has become one with his Lord. Loyalty is said to be important in the pledge between Lord and retainer. Though it may seem unobtainable, it is right before your eyes. If you once set yourself to it, you will become a superb retainer at that very moment. If you will put aside everything, your own will, your own wants, your own desires, and think only on the fact of how I may be able to serve my God, how I may be able to serve my Master, you will become a superb servant. Amen? Amen. Reliability obedience, devotion. These three are more important than the whole of wisdom and talent. And these three are for, far more obtainable if you seek to apply them. Amen? Amen? Of course, having wisdom and talent on top of that, oh yeah, you can definitely serve the Lord. But even somebody who says, I'm not good for anything. I don't have any talents. I don't have much wisdom. I don't have much knowledge. I'm not able to speak well. I don't have anything showable. 
If you can just lay your life down in service to the Lord, you're better than somebody who has the wisdom and the talent. Amen? You just have to have that desire to want to please your God. And He will use you in a mighty way. There might be somebody who has wisdom and talent, but yet they do not have complete devotion. They do not have complete obedience. They are not reliable. How well are they used by the Master? Not as effective as somebody who lays their life down for the Lord. Amen? Amen. And that gives me comfort this morning. There's times where I don't feel like I'm that good at things. I'm not that good, you know, at certain things. And I think, you know, I don't care about that. I just want to be used by you. He can give you the knowledge. He can yeah. give you the wisdom. Oh, yeah. He can give you the understanding, the talent. He can give you everything if you'll just trust in Him. Amen? Amen. Let's learn that obedience. Let's learn that devotion. Let's learn that reliability. Let's lay our lives down for Him. Let's look at some Scripture. John 12, 26. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my Father will honor. Serve Jesus, folks. God's going to honor you in your service. It's going to be worth it. 1 Corinthians 4, 1-2 through 2. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. Be faithful in your service to God. Don't be a fair weather Christian. Amen. Be a servant at all times to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the true Master of the universe. Amen. 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 Learn the, the value of being a servant. Not wanting to be served yourself, but wanting to serve others to the best of your ability. Amen? Amen. Matthew 24, 45 through 51. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes... We all know that Jesus is coming, folks. We'll find so doing. What does that mean? That means we'll find you doing something for Him. Amen? We'll find you doing. Assuredly, I say to you that He will make Him ruler over all His goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Man, that sounds pretty scary. There's a lot of people who claim to be servants of God. There's a lot of people who claim to be Christian. But the proof is in the pudding, folks. The proof is in your actions. Are you a servant of God? Yes. And when He comes, will He find you serving Him? Because He's going to come at a time you're not expecting, folks. And some people like to say, well, I'm going to get right with God when I get older. <laughs> I'm going to wait till I get my affairs in order, until I have enough fun in my life, then I'll get right with God. You have no idea what you're saying, folks. You are playing Russian roulette with a loaded gun, thinking that way. Because you don't know what's going to happen from minute to minute. You could walk outside and, and a limb fall down and kill you. You could get in your car and go down the road, just a, a mile down the road and die. You might have a disease that you didn't even know about and you die. There's all kinds of things that could kill you before you have a chance to get right. No, you get right with Him right now Amen. while you have breath in your lungs. Because He already says our life is but a vapor and it's over with. And you may not have a chance to get right with the Lord. So you get right with Him right now because He may come back. 
We, I might not even have a chance to finish my sermon and he's already coming. Amen. Amen. That is the imminence of his return and the way he tells us to look at it. Be watchful. Amen. Amen. And if that's not good enough, look at the next one. Luke 12, 35 through 37. Let your waist be girded and your lamps burning and you yourselves be like men who wait for their master. And when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may open to him immediately. Because they're waiting. Amen? Amen? Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Keep your eyes to the sky, folks. He's coming to a town near you. <laughs> Assuredly, I say to you, that he will gird himself and have them sit down to eat at the marriage supper of the Lamb, folks, and will come and serve them. He's still serving. Amen. He's still serving. Mm, that's how good our God is. Even when we get to heaven, mm, he's still serving us. Can you imagine? And when we think about our service on this earth, what are we doing? What are we doing to serve Him? What are we doing to serve others? Amen? Where are we at in this game? Hopefully we can get on board. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our final one for our service to Him. Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else... He will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. What is mammon? Money. Money. Whew. He's equating that as your master. Is money your master? Whew. Hopefully not. If money is all you think of, if money is what you are here for, that will become your master. And you will not put eminence on God in your life. You will not put precedent in your life for God if money is all that you seek. If having the next thing or the next item or the bigger house or the best car or the finest clothes, if that is all you think of, God is far from your mind. And you will begin to despise the things of God. You will begin to despise serving Him. And you will only serve yourself. And be self-seeking. And that is not the way to be. Amen? Amen? We already know this is not the mindset to have. But to help us even further, we're going to look at how we need to serve others. Amen? We already know we should serve God. And something the Holy Spirit shared with me one day, He said, if you do to get, you really take. And if you do to give, you really receive. Amen. Amen? Amen? Think about that for a second. If you do something to get something, you're really taking. But if you do something to just give, you actually become the receiver. Amen. You receive so much. When you are serving others, when you are giving, amen? When this is your nature, who you are, it actually becomes a fulfilling thing in your life. There are so many rich people out there who are depressed. They have everything in the world, but they're unhappy because they're not serving others. They're not helping others. They're not living a fulfilling life. God knows this. He put it inside of us, I believe, as all human beings, that we will understand the reality that we live in when we learn to be servants. We will get fulfillment. Amen? Amen. And when we don't, we will be unhappy and we won't know why. Why am I so unhappy? Why can I not enjoy life? It's because you are not becoming a servant. You have not learned to give yet. 
Because that is when you can only get true fulfillment in your life. Amen? Amen. And in that, on that note, I pray that some of you have observed me serving. As your pastor, I pray that maybe you have noticed me helping out around uh, picking up plates at fellowship dinner or maybe vacuuming in the morning or maybe preaching when I'm sick. Maybe you've noticed me serving in some capacity. And I'm not doing that or, or mentioning that so that you will think, oh, Pastor Brandon's so good because he's doing these things. No, I only hope that you can see an example that you too can learn how to have a desire to help and to serve. Because I've only learned that from Him. Amen? Amen. I've only learned it from Him. And I pray that you learn it as well. That if there's anything that you see that needs to be done around here, you just do it. You just take care of it. You just want to help. You just want to serve. Amen? And that's just our nature. That's just how we should want to be. Amen? 1 Peter 4.10 As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Minister. Let me, let me break that down for a second. A person who attends to the needs of others, and then it says especially in religious matters, a person who acts as the agent or servant of a person or thing. To attend to the needs. To take care of. To provide or supply. Amen? Minister. We're all to be ministers in some kind of way. Minister to one another. As we have a gift that God has placed inside of us, or a talent, or an ability, or whatever it may be, you use it in service to one another. Amen? Amen. And now, let's look at that word manifold. Now, that's not talking about a car, manifold. Well, let's look at this. Manifold grace of God. What does that mean? It means, I looked it up in, in, the, in the Hebrew, it's like various colors or shades, forms, demonstrated in different ways, various features or elements. Now, what that means is there's different forms of the grace of God. There's different shades of it, different levels of it, of God's grace that He has given us. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Different measures, different stages, different features, different elements, right? Anybody got a cell phone? <laughs> you look on there and there's different apps, right? Different apps, different features to your phone. You can text somebody, you can call them, you can voice chat with somebody, you can video chat with them, right? You can take pictures, you can do your calculator, you can write notes, you can check where you're going on your maps. There's so many features to this phone. There's so many elements to it. And in the same way, there's so many features to God's grace in our lives. Amen? Amen? There's so many benefits that we get from His grace. Isn't that cool? Isn't that beautiful? And as we think about that, there's so many things that He provides for us. What can I provide? What can I do in service to Him in that? What can I do in service to others? Amen? I'm getting closer to the end. 1 Corinthians 9.19 for though I am a free, so though oh, excuse me, for though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win the more, win the more to Christ. Amen. Amen. I've become a servant to everybody, helping everybody anywhere. I'm, oh, can I help you with that? Can I do this for you? Can I can I do something for you? What can I do to help others? Amen? And in that service, God might just win somebody to Christ. Yeah. Amen? Amen? God just might win somebody to Himself because all you were doing was just serving. All you were doing was just helping somebody else. You saw a need, you took care of it. Amen? Amen. How beautiful would that be? You didn't even know 
But what if you were helping, let's just say you're at Walmart, somebody was needing help loading their groceries in the back of their car, and you said, and you saw they were having trouble, and you said, hey, can I help you with that? Excuse me, I saw you were having some trouble. I just want to help you with that. Sure, thank you so much. And you say, well, God bless you. And they say, oh, well, hold on a second. What do you mean God bless me? I, I don't know God. I don't know Jesus. Can you talk to me about Him? You must know Him because you just served somebody that you don't even know. And you'll have a conversation and there you go. They become a believer right on the spot at Walmart. Mm. It can happen. There's been crazier things that have happened. And God may use you if you are a willing servant. If you are always mindful of serving your master. Amen. If you are always mindful of serving others, it just might just happen just like that. Amen? Amen. Don't you want to be used in that way? What a beautiful thing it is for somebody to serve God in that capacity. Galatians 5.13 For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh or living sinful. But through love, serve one another. Amen? As we see this liberty that God has given us. So much liberty, so much grace, so much freedom that God has given us. Let us be cheerful in our giving and in our service to one another. Amen? Amen. 2 Corinthians 4, 5. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. We become servants to one another for Jesus' sake. Amen? Amen. We want to serve one another. We want to have this mentality. I want to help somebody else. And then as we think about that, we think about this. Colossians 3, 23 through 24. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily or with all your heart. As to the Lord, whatever you do, do it as if you're doing it under the Lord. And not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. Amen? Amen. Whatever you do in this life, you pretend as if you're doing it for Jesus. Even taking out the trash. Even vacuuming. Right? Sometimes sometimes I have to fight fleshly thoughts and I'm like vacuuming them. Oh, nobody's vacuuming now. Nobody has to vacuum but Pastor Brandon. <laughs> and then I say, no. No, no. I'm not going to think that way. I'm going to thank Jesus that I get to serve him in this way. I get to do this. Or if I'm mowing, I get to mow. I get to weed eat. I get to kill the ants. I get to do the hedges. I get to take out the trash for my Lord. I get the reward for that. Amen? Amen? That's how we need to think. I get to serve my Jesus. He came as a servant. He came washing feet. I'm going to serve other people too. And I'm going to like it. I'm going to do it with a smile on my face. Amen? Our final scripture. Matthew 25, 21. His Lord said to him, Well done good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. Faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Just being faithful over a few things. He takes that and times it by ten. Amen. Faithful, and we were serving him over. Maybe just taking out the trash faithfully. Amen. Maybe just vacuuming faithfully. Whatever it was. Guess what? You're gonna be ruler over many things just for being faithful. Just for doing it for me. Amen. <laughs> to serve or be served. That is the question. In a world that is trending towards selfishness, 
live a selfless life in constant devotion to your heavenly master serving him and others for no other reason than the service itself showing true love by your unwavering obedience amen we live to serve while we're here while we're alive we live in service and then we die in service amen take up your cross daily take up your cross daily what does that really mean Jesus died once for all on his cross and then he says take up your cross daily sacrifice your life daily for him sacrifice yourself in service daily for him amen what are we here for is it to live on a constant vacation until we get to heaven no we live to serve amen and we die in service if you're still alive folks some of you are in open age if you're alive, you're alive for a reason. You're here for a reason. You still have a purpose. Young folks, we got a lot of life left. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Every bit of your life, use it in service to the King. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The God of the universe. What are you doing for yourself? take care of you. A lot of people think, man, I gotta get my life right. I gotta do this for myself. I gotta do all this. No, you just serve Him. He'll work all that out. He'll fix all your problems. You can try to get all your stuff right. You won't ever fix it yourself. Good luck. You'll keep trying and failing. No, but you put Him first. You seek the kingdom first. And all of this will be added to you. And abundantly pressed down, overflowing when you give back to Him, folks. Trust me. It's worth it to serve Him. It's worth it and it will not go unrewarded. Amen.
How's your voice, baby? Feeling good? She has strep throat too, folks, and she's over here singing for the Lord. That's beautiful. Serving God is beautiful. Sometimes you gotta do it in times of inconvenience. I've had an out to not have to preach this morning. I had an out. I ran 102 feet yesterday. Half strip throat. I had an out. I didn't want to take it. I wanted to stand up here and preach this message. I knew the devil was trying to steal my voice. I knew he was trying to stop me from giving this message. Because I knew that you needed this message. God knew you needed it. We all need it. Amen. Amen. This is truth, folks. And when you wrap your minds around it, you're going to live a fulfilling life. Amen. When you live in service to, to God, number one, and then to others, you will, your life will be fulfilled. And sometimes your service is going to have to come in matters of inconvenience, in times when it's hard. When Jesus went to the cross, it was not easy. It was no matter of an easy, convenient thing. It wasn't a one and done thing. It wasn't just going to the guillotine and getting his head chopped off and it was done. No, it was a long, drawn out, hard thing that he had to do in service to God. But he did it for you. Amen. So what can I do for him? Sometimes it's going to be hard for us to serve him. Sometimes. It's not going to be convenient. Sometimes it's going to require us to get out of our comfort zones. Service is not meant to be comfortable. Sometimes we're going to have to get our hands dirty. Amen? But it's in service to the king. Is it worth it? Amen. Oh, yes. Your rewards will be bountiful. Oh, yes. Who knows how many it will be. Don't worry about that, though. Just think about how can I serve my God today and others. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's close in prayer. Thank you, Father, that you have given us this time. You have given us this message. I can feel your presence, Lord. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the peace that is resting upon this place right now. Let it rest upon all of us here. Thank you, Father. You are so good. Help us to be your servants. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.